What do you get when you combine a rapidly evolving commercial space flight industry and an increasingly efficient and cost-effective way of manufacturing? You get Relativity Space, whose 3D printed rocket is set to make its debut launch in a matter of weeks. Let's take a look at how this all came to be and how 3D printing could transform the future of spaceflight. Relativity Space is the brainchild of Tim Ellis and Jordan Newt. Ellis, who worked as an engineer for Blue Origin, frequently carpooled with his buddy Noon, who was employed by nearby SpaceX as a propulsion engineer. Ellis was also starting a proof-of-concept metal 3D printing division at Blue Origin, but soon realized that the experimental division would not be fully accepted by Jeff Bezos and company since it would require a complete redesign of the rocket's fabrication process. It was at that time the two began formulating ideas for their own space enterprise. It was the draw and the excitement of being the first to try this crazy idea of printing a whole rocket and developing the world's largest metal 3D printers. Their technical vision was that by fusing 3D printing, artificial intelligence, autonomous robotics, and in-house manufacturing, they could craft rockets with one-tenth as many parts to streamline testing. The two visionaries quickly found interest in their vision, with major investors such as Mark Cuban and Y Combinator seeding the young company. Fast forward to today, and Relativity Space has over 50 investors totaling a whopping $1.3 billion in funding. It seems that everybody wants to buy in on space travel. Now about 8 years from its founding, Relativity continues to grow as it pursues manufacturing rockets out of mostly 3D printed structures and parts. The company's first rocket, known as Tehran 1, is 85% 3D printed by mass, making the 115-foot two-stage rocket the largest 3D printed object to exist and to attempt orbital flight. The only part of the Tehran 1 that wasn't 3D printed is its electrical systems. Tehran 1 was printed at a 120,000 square foot facility nicknamed the Portal, which features five enclosures for Relativity's printers. The rocket was printed vertically on their third generation custom in-house 3D printer, codenamed Stargate. These printers are capable of manufacturing a single piece of metal up to 32 feet tall, or as high as the ceiling allows. Due to this limitation, Relativity built the rockets in sections, and then used a specialized horizontal conjoining system to fit the pieces together. That system is essentially another robotic arm that stitch welded the sections together. According to Relativity's Vice President of Factory Development, Zachary Dunn, the benefit of using the horizontal conjoiner is that it allows us to run more of these third generation printers in parallel, so we can cut down the total build time of the vehicle. We are able to print on each printer a foot of metal per day, so when we're running on all printers, we're able to print a rocket in less than a month. The Tehran 1 features 9 Aeon engines on the rocket's first stage and an Aeon VAC engine on the second. These engines are also 3D printed and will use a combination of liquid oxygen and liquid natural gas as fuel, a combination that has never been used to reach orbit. In the future, the company aims to build the Tehran 1 rockets that are 95% 3D printed in as little as 60 days. Recently, the company unveiled its new factory, nicknamed the Wormhole, a more than 1 million square foot facility where Boeing previously built C-17s. Relativity is now filling it in with machinery and building its larger reusable line of Tehran R rockets. In 2021, Relativity unveiled the much more powerful and better performing Tehran R, which will be approximately 216 feet tall by 16 feet wide. It will also boost nearly 25 times the payload mass of the Tehran 1, hoisting approximately 44,100 pounds into low Earth orbit. The first Tehran R may launch as soon as 2024. The company's newest additive manufacturing machines, codenamed Reaper, marks the fourth generation of the company's Stargate printers. Unlike prior generations, which printed vertically, this fourth generation prints the main structures of the Tehran R horizontally. 
The company emphasized that the change allows its printers to manufacture seven times faster than the third generation and have been tested at speeds of up to 12 times faster. So far, the company is utilizing about a third of the former Boeing facility. According to Ellis, Relativity has room for about a dozen printers that can produce Tehran R rockets at a pace of several a year. But for now, Relativity hasn't had one of their rockets leave the launch pad. On February 6th, the company announced that they had a fully assembled two-stage Tehran 1 at the launch pad for final ground tests. And although Relativity has not announced an official launch date, the Tehran 1 is rumored to be launching from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at some point this month. With around $1.8 billion in launches pre-sold, some of which are contracts with the Department of Defense, Relativity Space's first launch mission, called Good Luck Have Fun, will act as an important milestone for the Tehran 1 rocket and the company in general. 3D printing has a bright future in the space travel industry. The applications are seemingly endless. Currently, there is a 3D printer on the International Space Station, but it was only used to print novelty thermoplastic toys in 2014. However, think of the possibilities if a space station or a shuttle could print their own metal parts for upgrades and repairs or if a 3D printer could build structures on the moon, Mars, or any other planets with minimal labor, all while using the natural resources around them. I invite you to comment with your ideas of where 3D printing could be applied in space travel. And I look forward to sharing more interesting stories with you. Thanks for watching.